Hey everyone, welcome back to another MG Lifestyle Solutions Lifestyle Review video. Um, and today I'm gonna to be covering the Galaxy Watch again, and this time I'm gonna be talking about just a general six month follow up, um, how I've been wearing it and using it over the past six months, um, and just my overall experience, hopefully something that you can learn from, take away something from it, and apply it to your daily life. So, here we go. All right, so let's jump into the watch and let's check out the watch face. So this is the watch face that I've been using pretty regularly, um, pretty much exclusively this whole period. Um, it really has everything I could ever want on it. It displays the battery life in two different ways. It gives me the time digitally and analog. Um, I have the date, the t uh, day of the week, my steps, my floor count. I get three shortcuts, one here, one here, and one there. The one I use the most is the stopwatch for work purposes when I'm training or if I'm with a client or patient. Um, it's very useful there, but that again is a you know regular watch feature, so nothing too fancy there. Gives me my last heart rate measure up here, a nice quick um, access to the settings. Um, let's see what else we got, and then obviously if I want to make a phone call, there's that indicator there. Um, so very simple, very clear, and it has nice three uh, areas that you can personalize an app widget to. And also I'd say it's not super bright, um, so I, th I think it is something that helps conserve battery potentially, and that's always important when we're, when we're talking about these watches or any kind of wearable gadget. Okay, And I'll cover battery life a little later in this video, so stay tuned. <clears throat> Alright, so next, well, you can see it's still pretty cold here in Boston, um, but let's take a look at my most recent apps. And this really does a good job in covering the apps that I use the most on a regular basis. So we have Samsung Pay here, we have Nest as a third party app, <clears throat> excuse me, Samsung Health. This is literally just a nice little white light. Um, as a night light if I'm going into my son's room or something like that where I don't want to put a full light on but this app has been pretty useful <clears throat> and then text messaging and the music player and so those are six apps that I really use the most and yes there's you know a few others that I can you know I'll use here and there but these really do um, sum it up the most so looking at the widgets, um, watch only allows you to add, I think, 15 or something like that at a time. So you have to be a little bit selective, but that being said, I never found myself using all of them. So a couple, like the stress, um, I never used. I do tend to use the workout widget here that helps me track my heart rate and my workout duration throughout the week. Obviously, I do use the alarm quite often, but that is you know, regular watch feature as well. And then two widgets that I don't tend to use like I did initially was the water and caffeine tracking. Um, I'll, I will admit that I don't use these anymore, but they are a great feature that I think, you know, if you're looking to stay on top of that intake, that it's simple to use and track throughout the week. And then something that we probably all use in one way or another, is the step counter um, and this you know nice simple widget keeps track of the day gives you the percentage your steps what your target is and then what, how much you've reached throughout that week um, so again another widget that I do use a lot of so in terms of the bands um, you know the the watch came with this black one nice rubberized band and I've been mainly wearing and switching between these two uh, pretty much the same, just a little you know, obvious color difference and a little bit of a structural difference, but overall they do a great job. Um, I was wearing this leather one for a while, you know, for weekends and just it was a little bit more fancy, but over time, literally probably a couple, you know, three weeks of wearing it, um, I did have this occur, so I decided that I didn't want to wear it looking like this and it was getting a little flimsy on my wrist. So the big ticket item here is the battery life. Um, so how has it changed in the past six months? Uh, well, guess what? It has. Um, 
you know, when I first got the watch, it was lasting me about a solid three days of use before I threw it on the charger, and that was with about 16% left. And nowadays, I'm pretty much, I have to charge it after two days. Um, and again, not a, you know, that's over six months, that's a, a third of a, you know, a third difference, third less of battery life. Um, and, you know, that's pretty substantial. So a few more things regarding the battery. Overall, the nice thing is the watch does charge quite quickly. Um, so leaving it to charge overnight isn't the best idea, I would say, because, um, you know, it's possible to overcharge the device. Um, someone suggested that, you know, basically every time you jump in the shower or you're in the restroom, um, you know, keep the charging port in the restroom and, you know, take your watch off and let it charge while you're showering, you know, getting ready. Um, that way, if that takes, you know, 20 minutes, you get, you know, a little bit of a charge to, to definitely boost you up. Um, hopefully if you're not too low and that way just continuously maintaining a nice charge um, again logistically how that works for you you know that might vary depending on your schedule and, and what kind of things are in your morning routine um, you know also I don't know what's better if you you know charge it every day a little bit at a time or you know wait a couple of days to give it a full charge and just doing your best at not you know, overcharging it and leaving it on too long, um, where I think that, you know, for any device is not great. Um, in terms of the heart rate aspect, um, you know, I will say that I have struggled a little bit in getting a accurate measurement. Obviously, it's not going to read anything now, although eh, it might through my finger here. Let's see, um, but when I'm doing a strenuous exercise or if I'm crossfitting, then it, it tends to not pick it up, whether there's too much movement in my wrist or if, you know, I try to, <clears throat> yeah, so all right, that worked even just having it up against my finger, but, you know, when I'm doing kind of a big complex movement, doesn't always capture those higher intensity heart rates and that's really what I'm interested in seeing you know where I'm training at and how quickly I'm recovering so if it takes a minute or two for it to register during a workout um, you know I'm definitely not getting the most accurate numbers but overall it gives me you know some decent data and I'm not really relying on this data in my training it's just you know fun and useful information to have in my opinion um, so as an individual who enjoys watches and typically tries to change up the watch every once in a while, different occasions, um, I definitely took advantage of changing some of the watch faces and changing up the band to go along with it. Um, so if we were going out somewhere fancier, you know, I might throw on something like this, put on my metal um, watch band, and you know, just like that. Um, it's hard to tell that this is a smartwatch, especially with a metal band and the round face compared to some other company watches that are maybe rectangular or square or something a little less traditional of a watch face. Um, so that's something I've definitely liked about this watch and I'll continue to um, utilize, I think, in the future. So something important I think that we should cover is, um, you know, my daily use and how that related to battery life and, um, you know, if that's partially responsible for the reduction in performance there. Uh, but, at the, you know, that being said, I don't think my use was excessive. Um, you know, I would maybe send a couple texts, have a couple phone calls, um, you know, a week. Um, only, and that's only if I wasn't able to get to my phone for some reason. And typically phone calls would be short and quick, um, nothing too drawn out. Obviously the step count, the pedometer is going every day continuously. Um, any of the fitness apps I used, um, the heart rate monitor was active. And again, that you know that's maybe two or three times a week. Um, I didn't use really any GPS features. 
I think the overall screen was, you know, medium and, you know, in terms of brightness, nothing crazy there. Um, and again, these are the most common apps. So again, the stopwatch drains the battery a little bit. The, the, uh, the white light here would do that as well. You know, if you leave that on long enough, um, but for the most part, all the other ones are pretty quick use. Um, and then you're done with it. Obviously the Samsung pay uses the NFC and some of those technologies, which, you know, will also drain it. Um, but again, I'm not making a purchase every day with the watch. So maybe, you know, a couple purchases a week and we're still getting, you know, still having to charge it every two days. So how much does all that really affect the battery versus it just naturally gets worse after using it? you know, compared to right out of the box. Um, I don't know if anyone can attest to these things, but this is just my experience. Um, and overall, you know, hopefully the battery doesn't continue to de decrease in function, because um, that was definitely one of the biggest reasons why I stopped using um, one of the earlier Samsung Gear um, smart watches or the, the Fit watches or whatever you want to call it so hopefully that doesn't happen with this because I do. Alright so in terms of quality over the past six months the watch has really stood up well to you know daily use including Jim you know wearing it to CrossFit and uh, and you know in the clinic um, little scratches like very minor things that maybe you can see on the camera here um, but overall, it has stood up to everything that I've put it through so far. Um, I have, you know, I did put on a screen protector um, that was given to me as a gift. You know, so that looks nice and fresh. Um, you know, no scratches on that. And it's done well protecting the, the original screen there. Um, I have not gone swimming with this watch, but I had, you know, taken plenty of showers with it, um, you know, I've submerged it completely, you know, washing dishes, giving my son a bath, um, you know, whatever. It's, it's been underwater and it's worked just fine. Um, so with you the know, that is, texting option with this watch is one of the things I use the most. Um, and it gives you some cool features here so you can hit the, you know, the voice, you can throw an emoji or you can write, um, oh, come on. All right. And then also it gives you some prefabricated messages, quick responses. Um, you can also edit and throw in your own ones that you feel like you use the most. Um, but nice thing is too, the voice one works pretty well. Hi, how are you? What can I do for you? So as you can see, it works pretty well in detecting what I said. Um, and you can choose whether you want to send it as a text or as a voice clip. And I will not send that discard. Okay. So that feature is nice. All right, so let's talk about my overall use of the watch. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, I'd say obviously used it for the standard watch features, time, date, um, and nowadays pedometer. Used it for a stopwatch um, while I'm in the clinic working with patients and clients. And then on a more smartphone level or smartwatch level, um, I definitely answered a couple phone calls a week, um, you know, probably sent a couple texts a day, just quick responses. Um, I used the kind of night light, soft light um, while navigating, you know, through my son's room at night so I didn't have to turn on the room light. Um, so that definitely used up the battery a little bit, um, you know, using Samsung Pay, activating the NFC. You know, again, all these things are going to kind of contribute to um, using battery life. And of course, you know, the watch is continuously connected um, to my phone through Bluetooth. So that's got to be one of the bigger draining pieces um, for the watch. You know, overall screen uh, brightness was, you know, 
average, I would say. I tried to keep it maybe even a little below average. Um, and, you know, overall, you know, I wasn't really doing anything or using it out of the, the ordinary, I would say. And even with that, you know, again, there was about a third of a loss in battery life compared to that when I was using it in the first couple of weeks. Um, and now we're about six months into it with the watch. So I'm hoping that the battery life doesn't get worse from here and that it doesn't drop to needing it charge every day um, like some other watch brands that I know of. But overall, you know, I love the watch. I plan to continue to wear it on a daily basis. Um, you know, I think that maybe when I go to certain fancier occasions, maybe I'll bring out, you know, some of my regular, um, you know, more snazzy watches, if you will. But again, like I said before, with some of those different watch faces and, you know, throwing, you know, just changing up the bands, getting a, a metal band on there, um, you can get it looking pretty fancy because it is that nice circular face and it blends right in like any other watch. Um, you can even you can even buy fancy watch faces from like Rolex or whatever big names like that I believe. Um, I know Tag has some watch faces so it's pretty wild. It depends on how much money you want to spend. I have no clue what they charge for those but again you can get it looking pretty fancy. Um, so anyways thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram at MG Lifestyle Solutions. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.